Welcome to Tutorio. Subscribe, like, and hit the bell icon to never miss another one of our amazing videos. Have you ever stopped to wonder how money is made? Not the physical printing of banknotes, but the intricate process of creating value that we all use as money. A fascinating journey awaits us as we unravel the mystery of money creation. Let's step back in time to the origins of money. There was a time when we bartered goods and services directly. You could trade a cow for a wagon or a sack of grain for a new pair of shoes. But as societies grew more complex, so did our need for a more efficient system of exchange. Enter money, the universal medium of exchange that could represent the value of any good or service. But what gives this money its value? The answer lies in the concept of fiat money. Fiat is Latin for let it be done. And in the world of finance, it refers to money that has value simply because a government declares that it does. This is a far cry from the days when money was backed by gold, a time when you could walk into a bank and exchange your paper money for its equivalent in gold. But the gold standard was abandoned in the early 70s. Since then, the value of money is not based on any physical commodity, but on the trust and confidence we place in the economy and the government that issues it. Central banks play a crucial role in this process. They control the money supply, ensuring economic stability by adjusting interest rates and lending policies. The trust we place in these institutions and their ability to manage the economy is what ultimately gives our money value. So the creation of money isn't about printing more notes, it's a complex process of trust and economic stability. But how does this process work, you might ask? Let's delve deeper. You've probably heard of banks lending money, but did you know that every time a bank makes a loan, it effectively creates money? That's right, banks have the power to create money, and it all comes down to something called fractional reserve banking. So, what is fractional reserve banking? It's a banking system where only a fraction of bank deposits are backed by actual cash on hand and available for withdrawal. This is done to expand the economy by freeing capital for lending. In simpler terms, it means banks can lend more money than they actually have in their vaults. Now let's say you walk into a bank and take out a loan. The bank doesn't go into its vault, take out the money and hand it over to you. Instead, it simply credits your account with the loan amount. That money didn't exist before, but now it does thanks to the magic of fractional reserve banking. This process of creating money doesn't stop there. The money you borrow and spend gets deposited in other banks, and these banks can then lend out a fraction of those deposits, creating even more money. But remember, while banks play a significant role in money creation, they don't have an unlimited license to do so. They are regulated and must hold a certain amount of reserves to ensure they can meet their obligations. In essence, every time you take out a loan, you are participating in the creation of new money. Fascinating, isn't it? Now that we understand how money is created, what happens when too much money is made? You see, an oversupply of money can lead to inflation a situation where the prices of goods and services rise while the purchasing power of money decreases. Imagine going to your favorite coffee shop only to find that your daily cup of joe now costs twice as much. Not an ideal scenario, right? But it can get even worse. When inflation spirals out of control, we enter the realm of hyperinflation. We're talking about prices doubling not in years or months, but sometimes in mere hours. The most infamous example is Zimbabwe in the early 21st century, where prices were doubling every 24 hours at the height of their crisis. So who's the superhero that comes to the rescue in this scenario? Enter central banks. Their job is to control the money supply, ensuring we don't end up with too little or too much money in circulation. They use different tools like changing interest rates or buying and selling government bonds to keep the economy balanced. It's a delicate dance, a tightrope walk on a global scale, but when done right, it maintains the trust we place in our money and ensures economic stability. So the next time you handle a banknote, remember the complex processes that went into creating it. Money isn't just paper, it's a representation of trust and economic stability.